technical glitch that seems to always accompany these things, so thank you for your patience. My name is Declan Kiran, and I will be doing a modicum of moderation for this afternoon's meeting. You're all very welcome. Uh, our session this afternoon is titled Agenda for Horizon 2020, Europe's major new collaborative programme, and the potential for ICT solutions driving research priorities in Horizon uh, 2020. Um, we are very grateful to our panel and its members. I think since we have a little bit of delay and as always inevitably we have a time pressure, so I will uh, again welcome our panelists and thank you very much for taking the time to speak to us and, and share with us your ideas, your research at this important juncture. And when I say juncture, I think it's, it's worth reflecting why, why we're here. And of course, we will, we will uh, learn, we will cogitate, we will reflect, but partly why we're doing that is we're looking at now a, 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 that juncture I mentioned in the evolution of collaborative research programs. And of course, I have said the focus here will be Horizon 2020, but I would also uh, have a footnote uh, by saying that, introduce a footnote by saying that there are many other support mechanisms in Europe and around the world to support collaborative research and development in the area of ICT, needless to say, but worth reflecting on that why because the theme of this conference is, 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 is uh, European science within the context of global challenges and looking at the opportunities for global collaboration. And even further, I would say, looking at the enabling capacity and capacities of ICT in elaborating, developing, and making available infrastructures for science globally. More on that later. Our first speaker is David Soldani of uh, Huawei. David, the floor is yours. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Declan. So um, I come from Huawei and the uh, European Research Centre. So I think, uh, uh, first of all, I would like to thank you for this uh, kind invitation. And my presentation will address three main points. First, I would like to introduce you the Huawei European Research Centre in a high level, what we are doing, how many we are, and then. Uh, where we see the main challenges, uh, the horizon 2020 should address and some potential solutions that, um, especially my team in Munich, uh, we would like to address. Okay, I'm a part of uh, a, an organization which uh, is called Center Research Institute, and I am myself heading the institute in Europe within the European Research Center. Now, if you look at the uh, Huawei uh, presence, um, R&D presence in Europe, as you see here, we arrived in uh, the early 2000. We were about 50 people located in Sweden. We today are about 750 plus people. And uh, the investments, as you see here, uh, the company has is uh, drastically increasing. Um, we currently have several locations, and our headquarter is um, in Munich. On the slides, um, you may also see the different uh, technology directions. I would say that the uh, Nordic uh, sites, they focus mostly on the wireless technologies, but we are having also a lot of focus on optical technology. This is the UK, but also in Munich. And then we have a microwave research center under the center in Italy, Milano. And then you have, importantly, the headquarter of the uh, European Research Center that is in Munich. There we have several technology, and my team looks into the future net of technology and services. Now, looking at the trends and uh, where we should consider the main challenges for especially our carriers, I think there are five main points, and uh, some of the points, they are lasting now for a long time. So I just uh, maybe worth mentioning, so like the application coming, the data growth, and so forth. But I think there are some other important trends. We researchers and the commission as well, today represented by, should consider, like for example, the data. So the data, I think, is a, a mine uh, of uh, potential for our carriers, especially. And I think uh, it's also important to consider not the value per se in their context, but also the prediction, what we can really do with the, uh, the data. I think before there were also some interesting applications uh, related to our eyes and surgery. So what we consider here are especially on ICT services. And 
Other important trend, I think, is the software. So this software now, strong presence of software coming, especially, I think, uh, from the United States, that will have a huge impact on our network design. So we have to consider this, what it means in terms of business model, in terms of new technology, or important patents to be filed in Europe. And then the immersive experience. Now looking at the, the trends, so the immersive experience, what it means, what's going to happen, where also at the European Research Center we are investing a lot. Um, our expectations are, as uh, the previous professor mentioned, is to uh, address mostly the physiological characteristics of our eyes. Yes, we do believe and agree that a lot of information comes from the vision, what we see, the sight. And um, if you look at the trends now, uh, are that we're going to the three-dimensional. So the three-dimensional is not just about uh, what we already see with the glasses. You wear glasses. So I think the new trends is to have this kind of effects with no glasses. So we need to do a lot of research, a lot of investments in the terminals, in the screen, so that we can see the three-dimensional effects without using glasses. The problem is difficult because, uh, as you know, uh, we have different views, and depending on the view, we would need a different type of processes and transmission of the information. So this is all our challenges we need to address and resolve. Audio also coming in three dimensional, so we are expecting immersive type of experience. And this type of experience will be only present, say, in home environment, cinema, or say in the big screen, but in what way we are investing a lot to reproduce this kind of effects using mobile terminals, including the collaboration between terminals. Augmented reality is also an important trend to consider. Augmented reality means that I have the possibility of observing an object, so identify the object, then tracking it, and then add, enrich it by a lot of information. It could be like watching the European Parliament here outside and then add a lot of information by see the history, what's going on. Maybe today you could promote your <laughs> conference and so forth. That's also important trends we have to consider and analyze his own technology impact. I think that the ultimate experience would be something like represented on uh, this uh, screen where you really have an immersive environment at home where you can uh, learn, so assist real lectures or have an interaction in terms of gaming or other application could be into the uh, EL. Now, our vision, how the network uh, will transform, is in a high level painted on this slide. As uh, you may see over here, you have a lot of colors. What are those colors? So these colors means into the axis. So you will have, we are expecting many cells, and the peak bit rate reaching gigabit per second. So much, much, much higher than today next generation network, the LTE, for example. And then the transfer and transmission, we're expecting all optical network, including the switching. The core network, so the elements that will provide connectivity and at the same time services will be dominated by software. I have some other slides presenting uh, their meaning. There are coming new services. We heard about cloud, cloud computing, software as a service, platform as a service, and so forth. We believe there will be new services like network as a service so that if the network can be programmable, virtualized, we can define virtually the different type of networks and let different type of virtual operator offering different type of service. So there will be network as a service as an important enabler for business. At the same time, knowledge can be also offered as a service and data as well can be offered as a service. Coming to the uh, other important trend that will also drive, I think, the priority in the investments in Europe, we believe now coming the two worlds uh, together. So we have the machine in the one hand, so the machine like washing machine, the devices, or any other kind of uh, appliances, actuators, sensors. It's uh, one thing we still need to address, so the, the still challenges in uh, providing them connectivity. So simple like when I go home, how may I bring my wash dishes or something to my access point? Uh, this is also an unresolved problem. There are several things to be studied, especially in whether how much data I need to transfer. Maybe I need to model it, not need to transfer all the data from one box to another. 
but more importantly, we see coming the one denoted as cyber, cyber world, so the, the digital world. What is it? The web of things. It is anything that could be represented as an entity in the network, in the cloud, that can provide me services. For instance, about augmented reality, if I can capture an object, forward it to the network, the network may recognize it. So this kind of recognition, it is an object. I can represent it uh, by an entity, and I create a network of it, and I can together consider the interaction this digital object they could have with the physical object. We believe this would be a, a, um, a platform of uh, plenty of innovation. And as my last slide, to conclude my talk, and then I look forward to uh, for receiving questions, is uh, presenting the uh, solutions uh, we believe important to be considered in the horizon 2020. So the first uh, solution, uh, considering the heterogeneity of the network, the many network, there will be plenty of data centers. Our vision is that there will be many, many networks at the edge. That means kiosks, home, or other public services. There will be plenty of computational and storage power that could be made available. And that will determine dynamically sort of networks that we need to integrate, we need to use to offer new services. Therefore comes into the picture that we are investigating in Munich called orchestrator. Or the orchestrator we believe to be a dominating function of the future networks. What's the orchestrator doing? The orchestrator will be an element, a function, a new function in the network that will look at the complete infrastructure the functions, the services, the state of the services, and we'll decide where this kind of function should run efficiently and addressing exactly the end user demand. This is an area we believe very important, should be studied, and I believe in Europe could provide also a platform of plenty of new patents. The other two areas uh, we believe important, one is into the immersive experience, we need to invest into devices, into the technology to capture, recognize the object, and at the same time provide an immersive experience to the end users. And then finally, we believe we need some enablers platform, we call it middleware, that will bridge the cyber and the physical world. Only by doing this, we will make it possible to exploit all the possible capacity and resources in terms of physical object, but also the entity, which we call as machine to machine in the cloud. On top of this, there will be an easy way to generate new services like knowledge as a service, data as a service, and software as a service in a multi-tenancy model. Okay, thank you. David, thank you very much for that interesting and insightful vision for the future. And I'm sure it, gives, uh, it will give policymakers much to reflect on. Uh, thank you indeed. Our next speaker is Professor John 